and young my brother. <laughs> Today we're trading tails with Gilbert McAdam thanks to CMC Markets. What was your early life like growing up in Alice? I had a really brilliant childhood. I played a lot of sport. We never had commercial TV growing up from the time until I was 12 years old we had commercial. So all we did every day and every weekend was just sport, sport, sport. So I'm so lucky and I, sometimes I wish I could go back again. But yeah, yeah I, I played all sports, footy, soccer, cricket, everything. Always out of the house, <laughs> never in the house. Always. Well, back in our day when we grew up we had to get out of the house because yeah. that was the rule. But there was a rule that you had to get back before the sun went down. So <laughs> we knew the consequences. But uh, it was a good upbringing and um, I had really beautiful parents, taught us right from wrong and you know, I'd like to think my family um, benefited from mum and dad because just beautiful people. You're one of, one of ten kids, yeah. how, how many of you ended up playing well, AFL? Well there were three of us, um, Greg, my oldest brother, played at St Kilda in 1985. He played ten games for the club and he actually done his ligament in his knee and he could have played more, but back then if he had a knee injury, they just didn't have the technology. So unfortunately his career was cut short. But um, we never seen the best of Greg. Adrian McAdam, yeah. you know, the one that played at North Melbourne, the one that kicked all the goals. Yeah. He's the younger brother, so I'm in the middle. So three of us played, but I always say to people, Greg was the best out of a lot of us. They never seen the best of Greg. That's my opinion anyway. Your dad was one of the stolen generation. Mm. How has his journey and resilience shaped your own story? It shaped my life, Paddy, that his story, because he actually wrote a book, the, the old man. Basically, he was born in, what, 1933, 34, in the Kimberleys. He was born on a cattle station. They actually were walking the country, my father. They lived in houses and they never had, they were living in the bush. And they were going from places to places, story to story, because it, was on a cattle station, they basically all got employed by the cattle station and the owner, which is fair enough because they knew the country better than anybody else. He was actually born to the cattle station owner. So what had happened was the cattle station owner mucked around with my nana, which created my dad. Oh, yeah. Thus the name Charlie McAdam. And that's why we get the Scottish name from my grandfather who owned a cattle station whose name was Jimmy McAdam. And then from there, in the Kimberleys, what had happened was on the cattle station there were lots of half cars, quarter cars kids they called it at the time. I don't like that term, but that's what they called it at the time. All of a sudden there was a big mob of them. Not, at, not just at Springvale station where my dad was born, but all the stations around the Kimberleys. So what had happened, the West Australian government said, oh gee, we better do something about this. So they picked them all up and then they took them to a place called Mulla Bulla. And it was an actually run by the West Australian government. And they weren't treated very nice, Paddy, but um, that's the sort of life that my dad began. He worked hard all his life. He never went to school. I think he only did a little bit of schooling. So my dad's strength and his resilience and his, his survival instincts, I, I can see where I get it. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's just an amazing story, my dad. And I love sharing my story with people so they can have an understanding of the history of Australia. A bit like myself, you moved around with your footy, um, NT, the waffle, followed by the sandfall. How was, how was your journey been? Yeah, look, I struggled with homesickness, don't worry about that, and racism. That's, that's, the, that's the main reason why I always went back home, because I felt comfortable. That's because as soon as I got away from it and I was home with everyone else, I was like, oh, man, I'm back with everyone, I'm feel, feeling free now. Because you know when you go away, it's a hard road. So you've got to put up with a lot of things that people don't understand unless you go through it. I went through a lot. But the thing about that I'm so proud of is that I persevered and I kept persevering because I knew I had the ability. Sometimes it just didn't seem right where I was. But when I look back, I had a wonderful journey. You know, I played in the Waffle, the Sandful. You know, I played a lot of games in the Sandful, won the McGarry medal, you know, I played over 100 in the AFL, so I'm pretty proud of what I, what I ended up achieving. Yeah. How would you describe yourself as a player? Oh, I'd like to think I was all right. I don't reckon I had too many weaknesses. I probably could have been a bit more tougher in certain times, but I still think I was still tough. 
yeah. but not to the extent that some players are, but sometimes there's roles for different players and you have to find that role in the side. And, you know, we have people like Nathan Burke, who's just one of the toughest players I've ever played with. I've never seen anyone tougher than Burkey. And when you've got blokes like that doing, the, doing it for you, well, you've got all different roles, you know? Like yeah. other blokes got certain roles. So all round, I reckon I was all right. Yeah. I'd certainly call you tough. Um, I'd say you're pretty silky. The way you broke the lines, that long kick of yours. Um, mm. Yeah, from what I've seen from you up there with the best. Who was your favourite teammate to play with? Oh, no doubt, Cuss. Yeah. When, I first got to, when, when I first got drafted, that's the first thing that entered my mind was, oh, wow, I'm going to be playing with Nicky Winmar and plug a logger. <laughs> that was the first two things that come to my head. Yeah. I was thinking, oh, wow, this is going to be freaky playing with them two. And, mate, I was, I was ready to go that, on, day, on the day of the yeah. draft. But I had to wait a week or two, so yeah. <laughs> it was like I was ready to jump on that plane the next day. So, yeah, definitely cast. You know, me and him had some battles, and you know, we went through a lot of experiences. But not just cast. I always tell a lot of people Michael McLean when I went to Brisbane, yeah. Major, because he was like cast. He was the elder statesman, and they were like the elders that us mob looked up to. Yeah. And then us mob sort of took over from them, them from there. You know. Yeah. Yeah. No, I definitely feel that with my journey as well when you come in and you got you got those big brothers that look after you and then and then you become the you big just, brother. You just start it's like becomes part of your job. You just yeah. you're grateful and humbled by what your big brother's done for you, then you just want to pass it on to the little brothers, eh? That's it, brother. Um, we've been honored to wear Nikki's jumper design the past couple of years. Um, for someone who was there and experienced it, um, how do you look back on that? on that day almost 30 years ago. I'm very proud of it, brother, and you know, I'm just, I'm just so lucky and fortunate that I played in that game. You don't, you don't know what, what's gonna happen, you know? You, you get out to play the game footy, you don't know what's gonna happen until the game's over, eh? Yeah. So, it's just something that happened, and I had a feeling it was gonna happen, though, because we had a history with Collingwood yeah. before that game. I, I think we, in my first year we played them here, I think we come a draw. So the first game against Collingwood was a draw. Another, the following year, we beat them by one point. And then the following year, that's when we had the incident in Big Park. So every time we played Collingwood, there was always a drama. There was always a drama. <laughs> Something happened. Yeah, definitely that day, you let the ac actions do the talking, getting five Brownlow votes between you and Nicky. So we're proud of you for that. Um, you once said that when you played, it was basically anti-Indigenous round most weeks. Um, how have you seen things change? Oh, I've seen a lot change, Paddy, um, and I'm so proud how much it's changed because it was like we were playing it every game, every week. Don't worry about that. It felt like that. But the thing that I'm so proud of now is when you, when you, when you have Indigenous round and you see designs like this on a Guernsey, wouldn't happen in our day. Wouldn't happen. You know, and then you look on the oval and then you see the Aboriginal flag in the centre circle. And you look at the gold square, you see it in the, in the gold square. And then you get to welcome the country, you know, like, that stuff just never existed. So for me, as a former player, when I see all this stuff, I just see how far we've come. We've come a long way, and I'm so proud of the AFL for acknowledging it and taking ownership of it, yeah. because they should, because we've contributed so much to this game, our people, that they got to support us when we go through thick and thin, and sometimes they haven't, sometimes they do, and we just got to keep flying the flag. Yeah. What would you say to the next generation of brothers and sisters carrying a torch? Just remember where you come from. Just remember how hard it is to get there. Never forget where you come from, who your people are, and just be humble. You know, don't, 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 don't get a big head, you know, don't, don't take it, don't go overboard. Just remember who you are, where you come from, and don't ever forget that. That's the best advice I can give. Yeah. We got Aunty Katrina in at the moment, and um, mm. she's been awesome for the group to be, as players, mm. over the past few years, we've been crying out for, you know, to have someone in the club full time for us, so. Someone, yeah. to, someone to see and someone yeah. to go and talk to. Yeah. And someone to touch and just... Yeah. It's, it's a good feeling, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. See, we never had that. Mm. We had to do it ourselves. Yeah. So, 
It makes me happy when you say yeah. that. Yeah. She told me that every game she gives a boomerang out to opposition. Yeah. And, I, and I thought to myself, wow, that's pretty good. Like, it's not just Indigenous round, she yeah. does it every round. Yeah. So that's, that's education, brother. Yeah. That's, that's deadly. Yeah, that's, so. that's the journey that we're sort of on to show, show other clubs that you know, we're having those conversations, mm. we're open for those conversations, and um, you know, we want everyone coming can, on board. Can, can I ask you a question? Yeah. What, what's it like for you to play with nine Indigenous players? Did you ever think that would happen when you went to Essendon? Because you had a sum at Essendon yeah. before you come to the Sainers. Where, yeah, and, where, and Port Power. Yeah, I've been pretty lucky. Tell, tell me how, you, how yeah. that feels for you. Well, to have that many numbers first is... Is that the most? Is that the most? Is that the most? I've played with, I think, eight at Essendon, um, early days. But Kevin Sheedy was a big lover of, of us brothers. So, yeah, yeah. Um, and he, I reckon if, like, if Sheeds was here talking right now, he'd be saying exactly what we spoke about earlier, about mm. having the older blokes there. Because when I come into Essendon, I had Dean Rioli, mm. I had Nathan Lovett Murray, um, I had these followers here, and then, yes. then I come in, myself, Courtney Dempsey, and then we had a couple of young blokes come in. Come we had in. Richie Cole come through there. That's right, Richie um, did, yeah. We just had a good mix all the time. And when I went to Port Adelaide, it was the same. Yeah. Um, I was one of the older followers. How, how many was at Port Adelaide? We had nine, we had nine, nine there nine. at a time, yeah. Um, which is awesome, um, and you can just feel you feel the excitement around the club, and you you just feel a sense of like belonging and with with the other boys, and it makes it so much easier to get through. Like you, mm. we all, we all deal with that sort of homesickness, and I've I've been like that from day one. Like yeah. I miss I miss home, miss all my family. Do you, do like, you get homesick at oh, your age now? I think yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think at the moment I'm I've got better ways of like dealing with it. Um, I'm a lot more mature now than yeah, back then. Before, yeah, Whereas yeah. when I was a lot young, younger, and you can see, you know, some of these other young blokes from other clubs, if they don't have that support around them, like those big brothers, you know, they just want to go home straight away. Whereas yeah. I'm, I got to a point where, no, I, I feel like that want to go home, but then I go, no, I'm just going to hold a little bit and just get through this next few days or get and through this next right. few weeks, and I'll be right then. And then it sort of just comes and goes a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So, as I'm like a lot older now, mm -hmm. I think I appreciate it a lot more about having nine on the list. When I was at Essendon and Port Adelaide, having a lot of the boys there, it just seems fun and all that. I didn't really. But now I sit back and look and I go. Is that because you're at the end of yeah, your career? Yeah. Definitely. And you, and you feel it. Yeah. Yeah. And you're just grabbing every yeah. inch out of it. Yeah. So I just I appreciate it a lot more now. Mm. Yeah. Because I know how. I, how special it actually is, yeah. And then to have seven of us run out there. Um, I, was, I actually uh, broadcast that game on radio. Oh. And that was actually one of my proudest moments. Yeah. So it's interesting you brought that up. I, for me at that time when I was doing the broadcast, yeah, it was pretty special because there were seven of you. Yeah. And, and the way you played, you smashed them. So, it was exciting that day, and I'm glad that I was actually there commentating yeah. the game. So I remember that game really well. One thing that, that I always get asked every year about Indigenous Round and that, what mm. it means to me, and mm. I always mention two things, that I'm a role model for our people and the kids out there, and I, I always say that I pay my respects to the blokes like you that paved the way mm. for us to get, to get through. You know, like we have easier times these days mm. because of what you went through and, yep, and yep. the way that you got through it also. We definitely wouldn't be mm. big numbers. We wouldn't have nine on the list at the moment without you. So, I oh want to, yeah, no. oh no. thank you for that. Anyway. Uh, thanks, brother. And I'm just proud to be one of many Indigenous blokes that played for this footy club because, yep. like I said, my brother played for this club. And um, who knows? Might, another Makata might come along in 20 years' time. Who knows? 10 years, who knows? We'll just wait and see. But go Sainers.